Let's move on to our next session, which will be held by Marco Rocha. Let's be honest. Sustainability is probably the most used buzzwords throughout the last five years within the mice business, isn't it? And sometimes we are even fed up about this buzzword. Sustainability? Oh, come on, not again. But let me ask you a quick question. What is sustainability for you? Think about it. Is it something you must more or less reluctantly apply to because everyone else is doing it or demanding it, customer side, etc.? Or are you a true fan and willing user of sustainability methods that can help to save our planet? Which they probably will. Either way, Marco Rocha is not only the advisor for sustainability at Forward, the German Federation for the Event Business, but also an absolute expert when it comes to convincing people like you and me that sustainability is not only carbon neutral travel and organic catering, but much more than that and a really good thing to achieve. Please welcome to the stage, Marco Rocha. Good luck, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Just preparing myself for a second. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Is this already sustainable or can it go away? When we look into the future, can we be not sustainable? What do you think? I think no, we cannot be not sustainable. So we must be sustainable. And today, um, when uh, David asked me to uh, hold a presentation here, I said, well, in the afternoon after lunch, what topic are we going to take? Let's go for the CSRD because it's a really tough one. Um, I don't know whether this was the best decision ever. However, um, I'm happy to go with you along through the CSRD and see what effect it has on the mice industry. So first, a couple of words about me. Myself, I did business studies with focus on events, and then I did a bit of um, work project management in an um, association for the venues in Europe and a little bit of travel, a little bit of hospitality industry, a little bit of everything. And um, my last job was in a Congress location in a town called Chemnitz in Saxony. And there I was sustainability manager. So I got really uh, dive deep into what sustainability means in a location. And um, I realized, okay, it's not too, it's not very strategic. So I said, I want to go on. I did some studies in strategic event um, sustainability management, and now I'm still a sustainability manager at Forward. Forward, David already mentioned it, is Federal Association for the Event Industry. So we are a home of all, for all players in the industry in Germany, to say. Um, we have a really strong network and we promote knowledge uh, transfer with, within our members and um, we strengthen cooperation from, for them between each other and um, we are also a strong voice for the industry, which is very important, which we realized through, through uh, the COVID pandemic, which affected all of us. And so, Going a bit into what, what the industry looks like, I brought with me um, an, a, a graphic which was um, conducted during a research in 2020 um, where we realized, okay, the, the, the event industry doesn't really have a voice towards politics. We were the last, we were the, the first who couldn't do anything anymore and we were the last who could start to, uh, to, to work again and to get into our business. And um, I just brought this to, to show you um, because we're looking at the mice industry, what, what it means, um, and, and it, it's, it's part of this, uh, this research. And it shows that we are really like a big industry sector. The mice industry is like the sixth biggest industry sector within Germany only. And uh, we, we have about 1.2 mil million 
employees and um, 250,000 companies. So it, it's, a, it's a big proportion of, of the whole business in general. And um, why I bring this number for how many companies we are have in the mice industry, you will see a little bit later. But um, now, first, I mentioned the COVID pandemic, which was really tough for us. I brought this little picture, maybe you've seen it. It came up during the pandemic and it said like, Ash, be sure to wash your hands and all will be fine, right? We had really big trouble with, within the pandemic, meaning we couldn't do our business, all of us, whether it was travel, whether it was events business, whether it was location business, catering, nothing worked. But we were like in, in a tunnel, right? Meaning that we couldn't really see what, what else is coming towards us. So there is the climate change, there is biodiversity collapse. And this picture shows how much bigger this whole topic is when we're looking into sustainability. Now, if you ask yourself, like, what do you do? Maybe you eat less meat, maybe you do more vegetarian options at your events, maybe you do more travel with train or whatever, like smaller bits and pieces. But as long as it is all voluntarily, it is really tough to get really big things rolling and going. So within the EU, it's a question, why do we need regulatory, regulations in general? And I think regulations are a very important part on, on, on the future vision towards a more sustainable planet and uh, a planet worth living in. And the EU came up with the Green Deal in 2019. I'm sure you all heard about it. And I won't go through all the fields there. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see there's uh, circular economics, for example. All right? So the EU is facing towards or, or going towards um, a more sustainable and circular business models, as well as clean resource management and low resource management. And coming, coming up with all these points through the Green Deal, of course, there must be regulations, right? And so there are a lot of international and national laws. I'm sure you heard a couple of them. Maybe the, the most recent you've heard is the CSDDD, the due diligence, due diligence directive, um, which is equal to the German Lieferketten Sorgfaltspflichtengesetz. I know it's a terrible word, but it means you need to look into your sustainability, uh, pardon, pardon me, into your uh, supply chain, right? And within the Europe, uh, within the EU, it failed. So I didn't get approval to see as triple D, which is quite a quite nasty, because it was one German party who uh, was um, not voting for it, so therefore it failed, or one of the reasons it failed, um, and th this this is also part of the the Green Deal. But today we want to look more into the. Corporate Sustainable Reporting Directive (CSRD). Just, just raise your hand. Who have heard, who have heard of the CSRD before? Okay, not everyone. This is quite interesting because, for the European business, it is a really important topic, and you will see in the in, in the next minutes why. The the next slide is like. What is the CSRD, and uh, what was the what was previous to to the CSRD was the NFRD, non-financial reporting directive, and just to give you an idea of what the 
future C or the CSRD in the future means is, for example, that it extends to much more companies who are mandatory to report on their sustainability, um, sustainability actions, right? Um, it will also be SMEs who are affected to the CSRD. So a lot of companies will need to do sustainability reporting. And also, what is very important, the CSRD demands a double materiality. I will come in a second to what that means for you. And um, in, in, in the end, the CSRD is mandatory for companies to external audits. So that means you can't just say like it was previously, I'll do some reporting on sustainability and pff, whoever will read it will read it, but I don't care. But it, is, it must be part of the management report and it is being reviewed by auditors. Now, I've mentioned double materiality before. And just to give you an idea what that means, so a company needs to, to dive into action fields, into fields which they have an impact on with two views. So the view from the company towards the planet and the society. What impacts does the company have on society and the planet? And on the other hand, the inward impact or also called the financial materiality means that the company must look at which impacts does the outer world, the, the environment and society have on the, on the company. And it's not just that they need to do it and they can store it in somewhere and it doesn't matter, but the companies need to document how they do it. They need to get in touch with stakeholders. They need to record what the, the activation process with the stakeholders is. And in the end, they need to display a, a, a matrix or whatever they choose. What are their impact fields in both directions? So when we look at the CSRD, just a little timeline for you to get an idea. At the end of 22, at end of 2022, it was, um, it, it became a law by the EU. And last year, the first sentence of the ESRS was published. Um, I will come what, what that means in a second. And um, now that CSRD is valid already all over Europe. And in this year already, large companies that were also um, mandatory to report according to the NFRD are um, it is valid for them and they need to report as of next year and then in 1st of January 2025 it comes into account for large companies and in January 2026 it comes into account for capital marketed small um, small and medium sized companies in, in German we say KMU the SME is the, the English word. And then also a couple of years later, it comes for uh, companies from third, com third countries, like large, um, large corporations. They will also have to report according to the CSRD in the EU, even if they are not a EU-based company. All right? And What does it mean, a large company? I will have to check what uh, the translation was. Yeah, the, the commercial law in, in German, the HGB, is, uh, is the law that says what um, companies, like how they are clustered, right? So large companies mean they have to fill, fulfill two out of three um, criteria. And one of them is that they have over 250 employees, and then they have a total assets of at least 25 million and a net sales of 50 million. And the smaller capital-marketed-oriented SMEs 
can see the numbers here. They have a um, total assets of 450,000 euro and net sales of 900,000 euros. So this is what 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 the criteria defines, and um, I put these numbers in red because they were um, updated by the European Union at the end of um, at the end of last year due to inflation and other criteria. They said we're going to update the criteria for companies. But this is what, what is valid for all the companies. And now what does it mean in numbers? This is a, a, a small chart, but it's quite impressive that it says within the EU there used to be around about 11 or 12,000 companies who needed to do this voluntarily um, reporting, right? Now in the EU, it is 50,000 companies. And when we look at the mice industry, it's hotel chains, it's uh, fairgrounds. In Germany, all, all the larger fairgrounds are um, who need to do the CSRD reporting. It's, um, I just talked to a friend who is working for a city. Um, it's also the, the city administration who needs to do the CSRD reporting. And it, just in Germany, from about 500 large corporations, we're going into 15,000 companies who, knew, who need to do this reporting. So this is a massive switch on what companies need to do um, to, to have this sustainability reporting, according to the CSRD. And now, if we take a look at the mice industry, because you probably say, what, what, I work in a company, it's like 15 employees, or we have like 100 employees, it doesn't matter to us. Um, not quite. First, of course, it's important to check whether you're affected by the CSRD reporting. And um, then start working with it, what needs to be done in order to do a proper reporting. And secondly, there is a cascade effect, which big companies bring down to uh, smaller companies. I'll come to that in a second as well. And also, there is an issue about the scope three emissions, which I'll explain. The cascade effect means basically that companies who are your customers, they come to you because they're reporting, they need to report according to the CSRD. And they come to your company, um, even if you're non reporting by the criteria they will ask you to provide information because they need to look into their whole supply chain. And this means you are affected as well if you work with that company. You've probably noticed if you're talking to large corporations from automotive or whomever, pharma, pharma industry, they already ask you probably according to that. And even if because there is an exception that in the first three years when you're not able to provide any information or not get the information from your, from your suppliers, that's not a big deal, it's okay. But you need to give explanation. What are you doing in order to get that information recording to, um, according to the um, sustainability reporting? And you need to also explain what you're doing, what are your next steps as a company to get that information. So, as I said, small companies are affected as well from the CSRD. And also looking into scope three, you've probably seen that chart according to the GHG um, uh, scope, uh, scope one, two, three emissions uh, cluster that according to CSRD, companies are um, they, they must record on their scope three emissions. And if you have just a little bit dived into what that means, um, you probably notice that it's a really big thing because scope three emissions, doesn't matter if you're a production company or just doing some services or hospitality, to get these informations on scope three is a, is a really a tough 
challenge and it's important to start as early as possible to get some system into place in order to get that em emissions, these numbers, because you will be asked to provide them. And now we're talking about the CSRD, um, which is, the, the, there is a standard behind the reporting. So the European Union is sort of um, standardizing it. And the ESRS is the European, um, European Sustainability Reporting Standards. So you can see here in this chart that there are, um, let's say, f four sectors. One general sector, which needs to be reported on, ESRS 1 and 2. Then they're looking into environment issues. So what impacts does in, um, the company have on the environment? Then they're looking into social, um, all, all social dimension, the whole social dimension, like workers in the value chain, your own workforce, and so on and so forth. And then there's a governance. And just this chart, you have to imagine, it's like 1,100 and, I want to give you the right number. I wrote it down. What was it? 1,178 data points. So according to this chart, the company who is reporting, according to CSRD, needs to report nearly 1,200 data points, KPIs. And therefore, it's also important to, if, you're, if you need to do the reporting, probably your company, your legal department, whoever um, is responsible for it, has looked into it already. But um, getting 1,200 different KPIs, f f according to environment and social, is really not easy. And to those from, from Germany who are here, you've probably heard of the DNK, a lot of companies doing the sustainability reporting according to the German Sustainability Code. In, in German, it's Deutscher Nachhaltigkeitskodex. And um, they are also working on an implementation of the CSRD demands into the DNK so that you, if you are doing your reporting already according to it, you can also then do, uh, continue with the DNK, but you need to go according to ESRS, but they're trying to, to match it together that it is easier for, um, for companies to, who already work with it. So, um, as time is moving forward, I have a little wrap up I know it's, it's really a tough thing, it's regulations, it's European Union, Pfft, it's sometimes like, oh my God, what they want from me. But we as the mice industry, we cannot just say it doesn't bother me, it doesn't bother us. Um, there are enormous implications on German and European businesses um, regarding their reporting that they need to do. And as I said, it is mandate mandatory, so it's not um, a, a nice to have anymore. So there will be a big shift into sustainability actions, sustainability reporting. And um, as I just described, there is cascade effects to smaller companies as well as the, um, the ESRE standards who are there who uh, have been provided by the FRAC already in end of last year. They came up with the first set of data so that you can look into it and work according to it. So this, this was a quick intro into the CSRD, what it means to the, the MICE business. Um, I thank you very much for your attention. And in case you have any questions, I'm here for a couple of more minutes. So feel free to contact me. Thank you. Tonman is beschäftigt. Yeah, that is good for him. Ah, now, All right. we are. Listen, any one of you not speaking German, have you ever heard of a word like Lieferketten Sorgfaltspflichtengesetz? That's a nice one. It's a nice one? Yeah. Okay, no one understands it. Did you? No, you didn't. Good CS triple D is much easier. Good on you, good on you, good on you. Marco.
Thanks a lot. You're welcome. That was really, really interesting.